Want to know one reason why Canadians spend over $40 billion a year on home renovations? It's because we do a lot of the work ourselves. And we do that work so badly, a lot of materials get wasted. Inside this house, we've assembled the country's five worst amateur builders. I've never done that. We'll be grading their performances over 15 days of construction as they turn the ground floor of this dilapidated mansion See, look at that. into a working bed and breakfast. If we can learn from their mistakes, maybe we won't make them ourselves. Really, this is Canada's worst handyman. We're still six episodes away from naming Canada's worst handyman. So, there's still a lot of work to do. I'm a little in over my head, I think, here. As the nominees explore the expensive world of carpentry, plumbing... Turn off the damn water! ...and electrical work... That was a spark. We will be taking a serious look at which home projects really are worth doing yourself. Not worth it for the time it took and the practicality and the stress. Six months ago, we asked you to name the lousiest handyman in the country. This is my shelf. I uh, had to put it in. Oh, Jesus, watch. You introduced us to hundreds of potential candidates. It's uh, leaking all over the place. But in the end, it was clear. These five people are the worst. Casey, a police officer from Abbotsford, BC, was nominated by his wife, Marnie. This is like a puzzle. I'm terrible at puzzles. Casey wants to build a house from scratch. You can't screw it in a screw straight. How is he going to manage to build a house, put on a roof? You're gonna put the electrical in yourself, too? You can see why I wouldn't tell her about my dream. <laughs> Once, Casey dreamed of running cable to his rec room. I drilled right through the water drain, so there was a lot of leakage. Something where I tried just to save $10 ended up costing me over 300 The next nominee, Tex, recently got a $16,000 grant to fix up his house in Apple River, Nova Scotia. No, I ain't gonna work either. Before Tex spends that money on brand new materials, his wife Tara insisted that he sign up for rehab. He'll have an idea that something should be done a certain way, and you can't, you can't tell him that that's not the way. Come on in. Put the door off that way so the wind wouldn't blow directly through the cat door. Charmaine from Thunder Bay was pushed into rehab by Tina. The daughter, Charmaine, unwittingly pushed out of the family house. It's too much for me. I have my own things trying to get done, and I can't be distracted by the floors and the cupboards and tiles and the bathroom and paint here and paint there. Charmaine's unique projects blur the line between handiwork and arts and crafts. I love working with rope. Rope smells really nice. It's got great color and you can basically shape it to anything you want to. That brings us to Desmond. I've been nominated for Canada's Worst Handyman by my wife, Jen. At home in Woodstock, Ontario, Jenny is upset that too many of Des's jobs go unfinished. I just don't understand why you need to stop right here. Des has stopped work on his ceiling, he's abandoned his wallpaper, and he's given up on his molding. This piece just kind of falls to the floor, and I've forgotten to replace and cover up the outlet. The final room in rehab goes to Joe the Bullet Barbero. I'm Joey the Bullet Barbero, and my sister Rita nominated me for Canada's Worst Handyman. At home in Barrie, Ontario, Joe doesn't do any handiwork. 
I nominated Joe because he's this big, strong guy that could carry 400 pounds and not screw in a light bulb or put a nail in a wall. He can't even put together a toy dollhouse for his three daughters. Why didn't you put those on? I couldn't figure out how to do it, sweetie. How come? Because <laughs> Daddy doesn't do too much of that stuff. When Joe arrived in rehab... So when you normally do handiwork... Don't do any. Never, I'm raw, man. Raw, you're gonna hate me. He was definitely raw. But he was also eager to try out a lot of the tools he'd never even touched before. It's beeping all the time, man. Uh-huh. Oh, when we visited Canada's worst handymen in their homes, we couldn't help but notice they didn't have very good workbenches. Casey uses a beer cooler. Oh! What? You just went through the hinge. Oh. Charmaine Korea. uses her coffee table. Ooh. And Dez... Well, Dez had a good workbench. Until he used it. I cut the bench. When they got to rehab, the nominees all cut lumber on the floor. Or on something even more unstable. I so love this tool! The next challenge for Canada's Worst Handyman is to design and build a workbench. Yeah, my work is done. Okay, workbench. This shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, I'm thinking just a basic table. Just yeah. the four legs, the top. We're gonna make two sawhorses, we're gonna put a top on it, and we're gonna screw the top down. Casey's uncomplicated plan is to... Find something to use for legs, and then just hammer the plywood on top of it. But instead of plywood, Casey, Desmond, and Joe all select flimsy sheets of chipboard for their work surfaces. You don't want those other boards? That's not no, no, no. Like, I wouldn't have chosen this wood. That's OK. Why? Because it's not, I don't think it's sturdy enough. Joe thinks it's ready for legs. Just four of them. Joe, look at how flimsy this is. How about is. six of them? Try to think here for a minute. Dez tries screwing blocks into the chipboard. Ooh, wow. that came out a little too easy for the plywood, dear. And then screwing legs onto those blocks. Ooh. Well, why, is that, why is that one more wobblier? Believing it will cut down on the wobble. Just don't screw it to the floor. Yeah. Desmond chooses to fire a fistful of screws into the block. And that's not his worst choice. And you chose chipboard, why? Ooh. No reason. This is chipboard? Oh. That is the same as plywood? No, not at all. Plywood is thin sheets of wood glued together. The unbroken fibers give strength from end to end. Chipboard is loose pieces of scrap wood glued together. It has no strength. You wouldn't get that bow if it was plywood. To show us how to really make a work table, meet our head builder, Jeff Woodmansey. And our head designer, Joe Alcorn. He doesn't have a place for the dining table. He doesn't have a sconce laid out yet. Do, do you know what style of curtains you're going to get? Every episode, Joe and Jeff teach classes. Now, you want to make sure that the fabric fits around everything. Give final inspections. And this could bring tears to a glass eye. That's 750 bucks worth of tools lying around, and I bet you there's stuff missing. And do every challenge the bad handymen do. Just so you know, I'm not pounding it right in. Today, Joe plans out a workbench. Then this is the length that you want it. 40. And Jeff builds it. Jeff starts by making a frame for the top of his workbench. Then he creates a plywood surface to go on the frame. Two by four legs go securely into the frame. Each leg is then reinforced with a one by two and a horizontal brace. The secret to a rock solid workbench is this lower shelf, which connects to every leg, preventing wobbles. Oh my God, Jeff, you're good. Jeff is good and done in 53 minutes. A table won't be solid. It's not straight. No. Unless you make cuts that are perfectly square. 
Oh, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work, honey. Okay, that's crooked. A square cut means the angle is exactly 90 degrees here and here. To make square cuts, I'm encouraging people to use the tools we provided. Awesome, the speed square is the best thing they ever need, buddy. Watch this. A speed square enables a carpenter to make a fast but perfectly square line on any standard board. Where I work, this is the man's best friend. Des thinks he can accurately mark a square line with his level. How do you know that's absolutely perfectly 90 degrees? The bubble. The bubble? Yeah. I show Des how a level's bubble doesn't care which way it's facing. That doesn't calculate 90 degree angle. That tells us whether or not the floor is level. When you want to draw a straight line, it's 90 degrees across your wood. Oh, how easy is that? Charmaine isn't having an easy time with her sawhorses. What can we do here? to remedy this. I'm not marking this properly. I can't see a thing. You know what? <laughs> Stop swearing. Well, I can't help it. It's totally pissing me off. <sighs> Tex is also making sawhorses. OK, Mark. Right where? Here? What? No. On the inside of that board. No. Over here. Down. Right? See where that's joined at the top? Mark it this way, towards the wall. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. All right, about. you hold this for a second, okay. I'll mark it. To reinforce their chipboard, stabilizer, Joe, Casey, and Dez are all screwing on pieces of two by four. Oh my God. He screwed it to the floor. When we come back, Joe learns what's up. This is the bottom of it. So Why does it have to be the bottom? That's not the top. Yeah, this is the bottom. Canada's worst handymen need workbenches that can take a lot of abuse. So, they're each building one. Ooh. Why, is that, why is that a little wobblier? But instead of being strong, three of the benches are as fragile as flowers. Look how wobbly it is, eh? Charmaine's sawhorses are still a pipe dream. And Dez's workbench, well, it's totally screwed. To the floor. He screwed it to the floor. Where'd that fall? Joe has lost his screwdriver bit. You see where it went? So, to put his table together, he's trying to use a clumsy extender and a small bit he pilfered from his handheld screwdriver. It's not working out. Oh, I'm gonna f snap. For real, man. There's no pressure on it. Joe is putting pressure on himself. Intense pressure. He may have no skills, but focus is something Joe does have. Isn't this working? The tools Joe is using don't fit together. Come on. Straight. But he never comes close to figuring that out. Man, why does this keep falling out? Man, and now I lost the bit again. Frustrated, Joe applies so much pressure, he implants the screwdriver bit inside his chipboard. That's the drill bit. That's the actual drill bit. Actually, that's a screwdriver bit. Charmaine's losing a drill bit. Holy moly, it just got stuck in there. No, I can't get it out. Tex is almost done. Oh, sure, he's having a few slips. And pine shelves are an odd choice for a work surface, but... Tex is... Done. Tex is the first one done. As usual. It's not fancy, but she'll do the job. Dez's swaying table won't do the job. His wife's solution is to make leg braces. And you'd have to cut it on an angle. Like 
with that. That's a great idea, except for the fact that... Eventually, Des remembers that his speed square can mark a perfect 45 degree angle. Right? No, wrong. No, it has to go the other way, Des. It also has to be measured correctly. Too short. Joe has had it with his makeshift screwdriver. Just give me a hammer for a minute. And I'm being serious. All project long. Give me a hammer. You don't need a hammer. Joe has been wanting to hammer screws. Can you just pass me the hammer, please? Just for a sec. Joe, you're not supposed to hammer a screw. What you're not supposed to do has no bearing on what Joe does. You can't teach new tricks to old dogs. The oldest trick in Casey's book is letting his wife do the work. Put the table on the side. Put the table on the side? What do you Put mean? the table on its side. Why are you talking to me like that? Presumably because she wants the table flipped onto its side. Flip the table on its side. <laughs> to make her man feel included. Do it, do it! Marnie lets Casey drive home the final screw. Yes! Casey's chipboard table is done, but it will never survive a pounding. I think the workbench went well. A lot of the credit has to go to my wife, uh, given. Charmaine is still making sawhorse legs. What a bonehead. We have to make eight of these, not four. Desmond is discovering his literal screw-ups. <gasps> they are coming through. Yeah. And Joe is helplessly staggering on his last legs. Rita, just help me put it up so it doesn't break. See? Help me put it up so it doesn't break. Oh, I my say. God. Joe's table is a wreck, and he knows it. It didn't work out that great, you know what I mean? Desmond's also didn't work out. So obvious. I don't know what else to say. Can I just do, like, one project right? Desmond's workbench fails for many reasons. Uh, too high, too wobbly. Um, little nails coming to the top. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. That only leaves Charmaine. We don't lift nothing up. Sure, star. Tina, we still have to cut four more of these. The cuts never happen, and Charmaine doesn't finish. I definitely blew this one. When we come back, Joe falls behind. Oh, Joe! To learn more about the nominees for Canada's Worst Handyman... Have you ever done tiling? No. I'm asking them ten questions. Have you ever done any electrical work? Mm, no. Anyone who considers themselves handy... Have you ever painted a room? No. 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 ...should say yes. Have you ever used concrete or cement? No. Have you ever fixed a leaky faucet? Have I tried to, or it didn't really work out? That's why I'm here, Andrew. Of the ten tasks, Casey has only attempted four, including laying a floor. How did that work out? Uh, not so great. Lots of problems. Lots of bows, lots, lots of separation already. Desmond? No. Has done less. Have you ever laid a floor? Only the, the lick of the stick. If you find flooring that needs to be licked, don't buy it. Yes. Charmaine has been busy. Have you ever built furniture? Yes. She's done eight of the ten projects, including some dangerous work. Yeah, taking out a wall. Tex has been almost as busy. Have you ever fixed a leaky roof? Uh, no, I've created a leaky roof. He's done seven of the jobs. That leaves Joe. No. At the bottom of the toolbox. Have you ever built a fence? No, not a fence. The only thing Joe's ever done right is demolition work. Yeah, I jackhammered out a few uh, patios. 
Joe's biggest problem as a handyman is that he's not a handyman. What's a tool I use the most? If you have a drafty window, you could spend three or four or five hundred dollars fixing it. Or you could get some of this stuff for the low, low price of $7.99. Think of it as plastic surgery for windows. The next challenge for Canada's worst handyman is insulating their windows. No wrinkles. Every You've done this before. Every year we have to do this. So does Tex, but it's new to Desmond. We're going right here? Or are we going outside, or are we going here? Start this job by rimming the window frame with double-sided tape. Ah, you took it right off. Oh, that oh, no. there. The transparent tape must overlap on the corners. Do it right down here. No, 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 no. What? This man. What? This, this tangles so easily. Oh my God, I'm gonna lose my head. I'm going to lose my head. Then stretch the plastic to create an airtight seal. Oh no, no, half of it came off. I don't think that's right. Why not? It's supposed to be bad, you. Why do they make us do this technical finicky bull stuff? This isn't technical or and Yes, it is. When the plastic's in place, remove the wrinkles by heating it with a hair dryer. Check it out, that's wild. Oh my God, it's shrinking. Yeah, well, I don't want to burn it up. It came off. What just came off? The bottom. It's ripped. Son of a There's a big friggin' gaping hole. While Desmond and Jenny... Hold on, hero. Continue having trouble finding the warmth in this product. Tex has his plastic shrunk perfectly in place. What are you doing? You watch and see. Tex can't find his scissors, but he does have a spare utility knife blade. That's an apple wherever carpet knife. It's also a weapon commonly found in prisons. <gasps> watch the molding. You just sliced right across the sill, so now the sill has to be repainted. Tex heats his Nova Scotian home by burning wood. I never had this done in my first year of living. I burned five foot of wood. In second year? The next year, four foot of wood. Because of this? The third year, I get all the windows. I was going to have half foot. That's a 50% drop in heating costs. Another successful mission. Joe's plastic window pane looks successful, too. Drum test? That's the sound I'm looking for. <laughs> cool. It's the first task Joe's done perfectly. See what I did? Woo! Casey is still struggling to pull his project together. I think I'd be good at this with this hair dryer stuff. But Des is finished. Painting glass, pass! And Desmond is inspired. Yeah, we're doing this at home now. Charmaine got the back of her plastic dirty before she put it up. So out of ten... Nine. Where are you losing the one? On the dust. A dirty view... is as bad as a draft. As usual... Casey is spending more time watching than working. This is the drum test? It's a That's, snare drum, it's a, it's a loose snare. I'd say. Pass or fail? Fail. Whenever I'm near Casey, I hear wind whistling through something. After the break, Desmond proves he's a candidate for Canada's worst plasterer. What the hell? I quit. Is it worth it to try and plaster all of this yourself? Or should you hire a professional? The next challenge for Canada's worst handyman will be trying to plaster just a simple little hole in their wall. The rooms in this 100-year-old house have all been renovated during different eras. So, 
Casey has a hole in drywall that's sprouting insulation. Joe got the old-fashioned laths and plaster. And Desmond has a wall of crumbly mortar held on with a wire cage. All right, babe, what are we doing today? We're repairing this hole. OK, and you know how to do this? No. Sort of. All the nominees know how to do this. They just came from a hole patching class. Very, very, very easy to do. In class, our expert Jeff showed them how to cut sheetrock. You score the top surface of the drywall, and when you just touch it, it'll break. And he explained how to expand the holes out to the studs. You want to square your hole up, put your drywall into your space that you're going to repair, and fasten it. When it's screwed in place, mix the plaster. You're kind of looking for a forged consistency. To get that texture, the instructions say to mix three parts of plaster to one part of water. This being the first of three coats, use a putty knife to force the plaster liberally into the gaps. So that's drywall 101. Charmaine clearly gets the message. She starts by making real straight lines. What you think is straight and what isn't straight is two different things. When the hole is cut to her studs, Charmaine tears forwards. Just get, oops. You little monkey. This measuring thing for your mother just is a horrible thing. With one quick trim, Charmaine's drywall fits. We need to mix some putty. While Charmaine mixes plaster, Desmond is snipping. I gotta deal with all this. Casey is cutting. Oh, shoot. One of these days, I'm gonna cut a straight frickin' line. And Joe is dealing with a mess. Look at that. What'd you I do? I just made a bigger mess. During last episode's demolition project, Joe made such a mess of the old bathroom, Texas' adjoining wall got badly cracked. Today, Tex is ignoring his small hole so he can deal with his crumbling wall. This is going to be easy. I just got to get her done. Casey has been cutting holes for 12 minutes. That seems like a waste, though. Do I cut the stud? I keep cutting over and over again. Started cutting here. Every time I think about it, I cut a little bit more. So is that cut where it needs to be? Not yet. OK. I keep shaving her back. It's wasting time, but. But Casey enjoys wasting time. I like it. So he bangs away with the butt end of his mixer. Then he prods at his hole with a screwdriver. Also a fan of creative cutting. No, I'm just trying to get this straighter. Joe is experimenting with new techniques. Cutting with a hammer. This is going to work, I think, eh, Rita? Uh, I guess. Joe has the finesse of a wildebeest. And so does Casey. Oh. It's going to take about probably six or seven tries for me to wedge this sucker in. Casey tries cutting a new piece. But his meandering gouges look like a map to the hardware store in hell. When you score drywall, if you don't have a steady hand, if you're new at it, put a straight edge down. Because so much of handiwork is straight up common sense. And I'm worried that you have a bit of a common sense hurdle to get over. It can be challenging. Yeah. There we go. See? Too big. So all those bad cuts meant nothing. Speaking of common sense... Trying to, trying to cut that edge off with the hammer is going to prove to be difficult. Yeah. Joe is kneeling on his drywall. Oh, Look at that. You wrecked... No, it's not wrecked. You have ruined that piece of drywall. Look at that. Ta-da! Joe thinks plaster works like glue. It doesn't. You got that piece screwed in, yeah? No. Spitting plaster out when I push on it. And this is quick set plaster. That dries in 20 minutes. 
Desmond is trying to make plaster with 10 liters of water. Oh yeah, yeah, that's far. This is Desmond's third bag of plaster. Lots more, eh? Maybe too much water. Go oh, pour it in, pour it in. Jen, I need more drywall compounds. Pour some more. See how big that gap is? Okay, we finished. We're finished. Charmaine's patch job is perfect. I finished the drywall first this morning. So that was that was a, that was a great accomplishment. Here, I need more drywall compound. There is no more drywall compound. I just can't produce it out of my ass. We use like three or four boxes of and drywall yeah. compound. Did you read directions? No. If Des had read the directions, he wouldn't be doing this. Oh, this thing. That's not gonna work. What the hell? I quit. Des fails and wastes. $80 worth of plaster. I mean, that you put the first bag of compound Whatever. in. You're, you can see the water there. If you thought it was too much at that time, you should have said something. I was under no. stress with the, with the time. Doesn't matter. I still am not taking responsibility Whatever. for that. Whatever. So you're wrong. Believe it or not, every day in Ontario alone, 20 people are injured by falling off ladders. Uh, Joe! Don't worry about it. Our cameraman is worried about it. Talk to me and don't worry about it. The ladder's on three legs. What do you mean it's on three legs? Okay. Joe, the, the ladder's bending. Here. What are you doing? I don't know. What he's doing is hammering another screw. Man. I just f***ed everything up. Let go for a sec. All right. Pull it, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. I'm angry now. That plaster's drying on the wall, you know. Yep, and I can't really give a Plaster one, Joe nothing. Drives me bananas, man. Bananas, I feel like just hit, boom! Smashing the drywall. Texas quickset plaster should have been dry 10 minutes ago. I got this. I just thought of it. So he's trying to suck the moisture out with a sponge. No, no, that ain't working. I give it my best. Texas problems are piling up. The last person still working cut it way too big. Is Casey. Babe, I need a utility knife. Casey needs some organizational skills. Get your tools together. When we come back, leading the group challenge baffles Joe. Getting rid of everybody's gonna speed things up. It is? While turning the ground floor of this house into a bed and breakfast, the nominees for Canada's worst handyman have to whip up a kitchen from scratch. So, our expert Joe is teaching a class on kitchen design. Work triangle is three points. You have your fridge, your stove, and your sink. To start planning their dream room, Joe the Bullet calculates the exact amount of space the team has to work with. 26,753 square feet. What? No, it's just information. 26,000? All right. Is that what you just said? 26,000? There's no... It's actually 192 square feet. Do you want shiny or not shiny? Flat? What do you want? After 90 minutes, the team decides on painting the walls beige. No Semi-gloss. 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 They choose to make a countertop out of floor tiles. If we're gonna use tile, we can put it on the countertop so people don't have to walk on it. And they order more cupboards than will fit. Do you realize that we picked the second expensive one here? Yeah, yeah that's fine. Last episode, Joe was named the most improved handyman here, making him foreman of today's group challenge. Everybody better do their job or there's gonna be some serious trouble, man. Joe's job is designing and building a piece of furniture to occupy this area. So I'm going to design it, mm -hmm. and they're going to build it. Joe has four builders and three hours. I'm in foreman mode. Perfect. His plan is to build a wine rack. The only trouble is... I don't know how to do it, man. 
While Joe finalizes his plan, the people who nominated Canada's worst handymen start painting and wallpapering the rooms based on the designs provided by the bad handymen. And some of those designs are quite titillating. Joe starts by bringing up past failures. We haven't finished anything that we've started so far. You know what I mean? My fault, everybody's fault, whatever. We have to get this done today. We got three hours to do it. Joe's basic plan is to make a box and then just stick some shelves in it. Des and Charmaine will make the box, which leaves... You guys just do the shelves. Okay. Then we have to start getting it done. Measurements again, Joe, please. Measurements. Measurements again. Special academics. Seven and a quarter inch high, nine and a quarter inch wide. Tex is confused. Okay, whoa, where's the hand saw? Because the shelves Joe wants are too narrow to hold wine bottles. I don't get the mechanics of how to put the shelves together. To hold every piece of wood together, Joe wants to use dozens of these small brackets. We can just use these ones. The other, they're not the same size, but you gotta be kidding me. Joe, buddy, I... These all suck, Tex. What? These all suck. I know. Seven and a quarter, they're all short. How did that happen? Oh. Shouldn't have traced them. I should have measured every one of them. The cabinet could use better measuring, too. So this is the proper height right here. Special academics over here, because all we wanted was two little uh, separations on both of them, and we got nothing yet. If it's another 10, 15 minutes, then I'm going to snap. Are we having fun yet? Come on, boys. Uh. The only thing more confusing than Joe's half-baked plan Fire up. is Tex poking the saw blade while Casey fingers the trigger. Casey, let me do the bucket. Doing that is forgivable once, but twice. Are we through a bucket? I'm two for two? Casey is two for two. Which makes him number one on Joe's hit list. And you make the same measurements, right, you know Joe, what I mean? I Cut it into 12 inches, put them nine and a quarter inch apart. Okay. Two, there's your first one done. We got none done. If it's not done in 10 minutes, man, then he's done. 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 10 minutes later, Casey's even farther from completion. Do we have four of these cut, yes or no? We had four of them, and now we just cut these to use these. That was. Then we don't need them to use them. We need these to be recut. We cut the shelves that we originally cut for the main shelving. What I want you to do is I want you to do what I asked you to do, because if we can't do what I asked you to do, okay. then we don't need you here. Yeah. We have to get this done, man. I'm going to freak out, man. I'm gonna snap any minute now. So once it gets screwed in, there's going to be a huge overhang. It's got to be cut off. No, we don't know what we want. We don't know what we want because no one knows what they're doing. While Joe thinks, Desmond whines. How about the foreman uh, put down the clipboard and come help? That's think? not what the foreman does. Well, I know, but the foreman's not pissed off. They don't think it's done right. Why don't he come down here and show us then? While Desmond whines, Joe comes back. Yeah, whatever. Performance can help. Well, you know what, Des? Actually, you can go in the green room. We don't need you anymore. We don't need you. Are you kidding me? No, I'm being serious, man. We don't need you anymore. All you're doing is shooting your mouth off, and we're getting nothing done. So, oh, there you go. No, we can deal with him. You, Joe. Yeah, you. you too. You and your big mouth that never gets anything done. Off. What's going on? I just told Des to get out. Really? Shooting his mouth off, and he's not working. You're going to ask him to do one thing, and all he does is shoot his mouth off the whole time, so he's gone. Greener. Dez, he's done. Yeah. He's done. He's gone. No Dez? He's done. No Dez. No Dez. What he's doing is shooting his mouth off. Shove his gold helmet up his ass. He's getting rid of Dez. Gonna speed this up? Yeah, getting rid of Dez is gonna speed everything up. Okay. Yeah. Getting rid of everybody's gonna speed things up. It is? The three hours are almost gone, but Joe's nonsensical wine rack doesn't fit. We're gonna have to cut it down. After a few trims, Ooh. the unpractical crisscross does squeeze in. What's the deal with all the wasted space at the back? It's just the way it is. Time's up. We That's took it. it on the chin again. That's it, man. We're done. 
Joe's cabinet project is a complete disaster. It's my fault because you know what I mean? We didn't get her done. After the break, it's time to decide this episode's worst handyman. With all the challenges in this episode complete, the nominees for Canada's Worst Handyman go to their rooms to await final judgment from the experts. I think I'm the most improved. I think this table saves me. But when Casey gives his table a test, it can't be saved. It's a workbench. That's why you don't use chipboard. Jeff? It's not my workbench. In Desmond's room, designer Joe can't understand why his wife slathered 10 kilos of plaster onto the wall. The texture on the wall, it always makes everything more difficult. More difficult is fine if you can pull it off, though, right? Yeah, but I don't know if they can pull it off. Can you pull this off? I think so. In Tex's room, the toplessness is offending our designer. I don't want to come into a better breakfast and walk in and see that. And Jeff is offended by the workbench. You just pull on the bottom of the leg there. Just pull on. See? That's what I'm afraid of. Charmaine is finally finished her sawhorse bench. How long? Oh, two days. No, Honestly, no, 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 no. By the time I got to actually put it together, it was the second day. It was. And finally, Joe's wobbly work isn't really so much a table as much as it is a piece of Oh, man. The experts and I agree on who this episode's most improved handyman is. So now let's talk about the worst. Who's the worst handyman this episode? Joe. Boy, that didn't take long. <laughs> no. <laughs> Joe's workbench failed, his plaster job's a runaway disaster, and his red room is scary. I'm going to snap. As for his custom-made wine rack, it looks like it's already had a few drinks. This is uh, just an absolute mess. Terrible cuts, terrible joinery, and it just demonstrates panic. As bad as Joe was, I think Casey was worse. His wife put up his wallpaper. His wife did all of his priming. His table, he punched a hole in himself. Out here, he was the guy that cut every single sheet of plywood we provided. With Jeff and I in a stalemate, the final vote for this episode's worst handyman goes to Joe. The workers gather. To learn this episode's most improved handyman is... Tex. Well, thank you, sir. You, sir, are the most improved handyman here. Congratulations. Now, I'm afraid, I must announce who the worst handyman is for this episode. Oh! The bullet. The bullet. The bullet. Buddy. I'm afraid to say you are the worst handyman here. Take your picture and hang your head in shame on the mantle. You got good company up there, buddy. Yes, yeah, you and the cop. <laughs> As the worst handyman, Joe has one final lesson to get through. Everybody else is free to go. Well, everyone except Desmond. You stay here, too. Oh. Oh. In the group challenge today, Joe grabbed tools away from Dez. We don't need you. Are you kidding me? No, I'm being serious. Joe cursed at Dez. You too. And Joe mocks Dez. When Dez wanted to talk about it, Joe wouldn't even look at him. It is what it is, and I called it, and we're going to keep it like that. We can't keep it like this, because Dez and Joe have to keep working together. So, I'm going to ask you to say 10 nice things to this man. All right. 10 nice things. You're smart. You're... Joe, this is not a struggle. No, I know. I'm just trying, man. You know what I mean? I never said 10 nice things to anybody in my life, so it's hard. All right, uh... 
Um, you like the Leafs? Like I do, you know what I mean? You got a few tattoos, so you're like me there. I like that about you. Um. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Handyman, the nominees install a shower. Turn off the damn water! They build shelving units. How does this make sense? Do you know what two and five eighths is? I don't know why. It's Second almost one. three. This isn't even funny anymore, you know that? And in the group challenge, drywall gets screwed up. We're off. We are so off. While flooring gets nailed down. No, 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 boys. Look, look, look. Back to magic bus up. It's upside down and backwards, boys. Come on.